to another review. Today's review will be something of a first for the channel, as we'll be doing a review on a knife. Now it won't be the last review on a knife, I've got quite a few knives lined up that I want to do reviews for, but I figured I'd start with this one today first. This knife here, I actually first came across when I went on a trip with a mate. He had one and I really liked the way it felt and the way it handled. So I looked around for a little while for a variant, variation of it or even the original. Now there are plenty of copies getting around of this knife. Um, but I wanted the original and uh, I found a few places in Europe selling them. But there was only one here in Australia that I found that had a really good price and was selling the original version of it. And that was the Australasian Knife Collectors which I'll leave a link down in the description below if you guys want to check out the website. This is obviously not an ad for them, but for a review on the knife, but I thought I'd mention it because if anyone is looking for one of these, you can buy it from them um, rather than buying it from overseas and then waiting for it to go through customs and all that kind of hassle. I'll talk about that more in the value for money section anyway. But yeah, so I found this, um, and really impressed, really, really like this knife. What I'm going to do is talk about the basic history of the company. Um, we'll also talk about the specifications of the knife. I'll do some basic tests that I can do here on the tabletop, like cutting paper and whatnot. In the future, I probably will take it out uh, to the field and, and actually do some rugged tests on it. I'll also talk about the value for money. Uh, we'll show some close-up pictures of it and also how it looks strapped to a belt. And then I'll talk about some little add-ons I'd like to make to individualize or, or just add or enhance the uh, knife as it is already. Right, so the company that makes this is Ator. And Ator is a Spanish company. Ator is Spanish for father. And this knife comes in two styles. The first style is the Oso Branco, which is Spanish for white bear, and the Oso Negro, which obviously is Spanish for black bear. This one here is the Oso Negro. I wouldn't mind actually getting the Oso Blanco at some time, and we'll do a review on that, but more just probably just having a look at the differences between the two knives, which is not really much at all. Now the knife design is considered the ultimate Spanish survival knife. As you can see, it's a pretty aggressive looking knife. It's also used in this style formation in various military forces. In fact, the Oso Negro grip has the same grip as most NATO knives. Okay, so this is marketed as having a 180mm blade, but in actual fact it's more 160mm, because I'm measuring from the tip of the blade all the way down to where the blade stops, which is here. If you measure further down here, then it is 180, but it's 160. The handle length is 125mm, the blade thickness is 5mm, it has a double cut saw covering 50% of the rear of the blade, which is measured at 80 millimeters. The weight is 500 grams. The overall length is 310 millimeters. It's made in a modified 440B steel, which has a Rockwell hardness of 55 to 58. The blade is covered in a black powder coating, which you'll notice some wear here and on the rear of the blade here. Now this is brand new knife, not second hand, but this is just from uh, sheathing the, the knife. Um, if you don't want your knives to have any wear, then obviously don't use them. Lock them up into a cupboard, but this is all just superficial because as soon as you start using it, this powder coating is going to come off. The handle has a black polymer handle with a nice grip on it. As I mentioned before, similar to the NATO grip and the sheath that it comes with 
is a black polycarbonate and fiberglass rigid case. Now the thing I like about this case is there's no metal parts to it. Um, no buttons, no clips, but here has a latch. Very simple design. Keeps it nice and snug when it's in the sheath. And it has the same latch up the top here for where you put your belt. You'll notice also the wear marks correspond to the hole mark here. And also, if you turn the knife over, there's a mark right here, which corresponds to that clip there to hold it in place. As I said, that's pretty superficial, but um, I do like this sheath. I'm not quite sure what this hole is supposed to do or what it purpose is. Maybe it might be for drainage. If you get water in there and you don't want your knife sitting in a pool of water, it might have that for the drainage hole. Um, I've seen some um, photos of guys holding this up to their eye and looking near the sun so they're reducing some of the glare. Not quite sure. So if anyone knows or has an idea of what that hole is there for, by all means post uh, in the comments below. But I do like this sheath, it's a very rugged design. So as far as testing goes, I'm not quite sure what we can do, but um, I have seen a few videos where guys basically just test the edge sharpness out of the box by cutting a piece of paper. So I'm going to try doing that, and we'll cut up a few other things later on. But um, straight out of the box, the edge sharpness. It's pretty sharp. You obviously make this even sharper, but I don't think you'd want to make it too sharp. Because you start doing too much to the blade, you're going to risk chipping it. That's cutting through that, not a problem. Try the sawing. It's pretty easy to saw through it. Made his carrot. Alright, we'll just try it through some plastic as well. that pretty quickly. value this knife is actually very cheap for what it is as I said I've looked around for it I uh, found a few ripoffs and knockoffs at the markets on eBay even at gun shops but they're pricing those ripoffs at anywhere from 30 to 50 dollars now when you pick up the ripoffs and you pick up this knife here you know the difference in quality straight away I figured if I can pick up the real thing, I will. The price wasn't so much of an issue. But again, this is not a, a advertisement for the company that I brought it from, but it would be wrong for me not to mention where I got it because if you guys are interested, um, I do highly recommend their service. Uh, I, I got this a couple of days before Christmas and it came in literally the day before Christmas. So postage was extremely fast and very reasonable with the pricing. So as I said, the ripoffs can go up to about five uh, to, to fifty bucks. Now, for double the price that you would pay for a cheap ripoff, you can get the original thing. This here cost me ninety nine Australian dollars with fourteen dollars postage. So 
I'm very, very happy with the uh, value for money on this. Um, again, I'll do some more uh, more rigorous testing on it, where we use more than just household goods. Maybe some see how it goes with carving and, and maybe in meat and whatnot. But um, initial impressions, I'm very, very happy with it. In fact, as I mentioned, I might even get the also Blanco, which is the non powder coated version with the green OD green grip and brass prongs simply because I really do like this knife I love the shape of it so value for money most definitely So here it is strapped on, these are 511 pants and in this position here gives me access to the front pocket and rear pocket and also pocket down here and up here. But it's also easy access there, you can obviously put it on the other side if you want, same layout. But the latch, easy to open, easy to pull out. The only thing is if you have slightly larger thighs, then you might want to get a different cord or add on a, another cord. There's a bit of play here. And also, right there. But you could probably fix that by stitching. And... Again, it's not really that much once it's in there. Just in regards to add-ons for the blade, there's not really much you need to add on to it. Um, I did want to point out that apart from obviously the main edge on this knife there also seems to be a slight edge up here now this is dulled down and I think that's got something to do with Australian laws uh, having two edges on a blade is illegal so this may actually originally have been sharp but you can sharpen it if you want but bear in mind I think our legislation states that now would make that an illegal weapon so entirely up to you, but you may um, maybe shoot yourself in the foot if you get caught with something like that. But the add-ons I'd like to make are in regards to the sheath. What I wouldn't mind doing is grabbing some paracord and just wrapping it around the sheath like this all the way up from here all the way up to here you know you can never have too much paracord when you need it it's always good to have it the other thing I'd like to do is grab a piece of uh, material or whatnot put it through two slats here and through a basic compass it's always good to have a compass and you've got it there on your sheath these little compasses, they cost 50 cents or a dollar at the markets. They work, it's not a problem, I've had no problems with it. I've got one on my, uh, my watch. Um, why not? If it can fit on there, it might be handy. You never know, one day you might need it. The same with the paracord. Mm -hmm.